Right, I mentioned last week that I'd been looking to set up some sort of photo competition for viewers with Motown Customs. That's all been sorted out now and in a moment we're going to talk about that and I'll tell you how to enter and what the prizes are. But first of all, I thought we would just touch on something which I personally think is quite important, something that will help the world out with the current situation. Now, we all think of the internet as being this huge electronic resource that has infinite capacity. Something that can cope with whatever the world throws at it. But actually, it's not. It is a constantly growing entity, but then the use of it is constantly growing as well. And as we all know, during normal times, it can be a little bit awkward and sluggish at times. Now, you may or may not have noticed that over the last few weeks, the internet has got a little bit buggy and slowed down a bit. I certainly have. Both mobile internet and landline-based broadband. And the reason for that is that over the last few weeks, worldwide, a quarter or a half the population are no longer at work. And this means that the World Wide Web is getting an absolute hammering. And it's currently running beyond its normal expected capacity. I don't think there's been an awful lot of coverage on this yet, but mobile networks and broadband networks are getting worried. A lot of usage caps have been taken off by various companies because people are having to work from home, which means they're using additional broadband and mobile networks. In order to ensure that each and every country can continue to run its economy and its commerce to as close to normal as possible. And of course, those of us who can't work, who can't go out, are using more internet than we've ever done before. Now, at the moment, the biggest concern is that emergency services, medical services, government and local government, power companies, water companies and the military worldwide rely very heavily on the internet. We don't know exactly what is going to happen with this worldwide emergency. One thing that we do know is that we're still very much at the beginning of the emergency and there is potentially a lot to play out yet. The concern is that as time goes on these vital services worldwide may get to the stage where they can't operate efficiently because too much strain has been put on the internet. Now, I'm pretty sure that when push comes to shove, these services will be given priority and we may well find that it's our internet, domestic internet, that may end up having some restrictions put on it. But there's actually something we can do both to prevent that and to help out these vital services worldwide. And it's something that is really easy and something that we're probably not even going to notice. The truth is normal terrestrial network TV worldwide has pretty much had its day. We've all got used to on-demand entertainment and to that end nearly all the entertainment that we watch is online. And if I remember the last figures released correctly, 75% of all online content is now watched here on YouTube. The figures are crazy, there's something like 500 hours of video uploaded onto YouTube every minute. Now, the largest amount of that content is watched on mobile phones, a little screen probably no more than six inches across. But the number of people watching YouTube on their smart TVs, their 4K ultra high definition smart TVs, is growing. When you're watching YouTube, you have a choice as to what definition you choose to watch. It can be the old standard definition, 480, it can be the old HD, 720. But for all those that are using up-to-date devices, you're probably choosing to use, at the very least, 1080p Full HD or Ultra High Definition 4K. Those two last top-rated definitions are very internet-hungry. 
it requires a huge amount of data to get that video to play on your device. A few weeks ago, YouTube set the default definition to 480, normal standard definition. If you watch YouTube on your mobile phone, you probably didn't notice because the Hue and I, to be quite honest, isn't that good that it can really tell the difference between 4K and 480 on a screen that size. Especially if you're normally watching videos on your phone in portrait mode. But those of you watching on other devices probably noticed at some stage that the picture quality wasn't that good. You went to your little settings icon at the bottom of your screen, noticed that it was set at 480 and swapped it back to 1080p or 4K. Which is fine, YouTube aren't trying to force you to watch standard definition. They just set it at that hoping that people would leave it there, but you don't have to leave it there. Now, I'm not asking you to do this, I'm just suggesting. And I'm not suggesting that you go on the internet less often, or limit your hours on the internet, or watch less YouTube. What I'm suggesting is that we can all help our countries, our, our emergency services, our medical services, if we just go to the settings icon at the bottom of our screens and turn down the definition that we're watching our videos in. Doing this will help the whole world out. And to be honest, if you are finding YouTube a little bit sluggish, it may also smooth out and speed up your user experience. All I'm suggesting is that you go through that list of definitions and set it to default at the lowest definition you can stand to watch it in. If everybody did this, it would free up a huge amount of bandwidth around the world. Even if you just knock the definition down from ultra high definition to 1080p, it's going to make a huge difference. It's just one little thing that we can all do to help safeguard the operation of those vital services. Right, I've said my piece, let's get on. Right, this Rural Britannia promotion that Moton have been having to help everyone out during this current situation, we thought that it might be nice to do something to sort of pull together a whole sort of community spirit. It's all very well reducing the price of custom parts so that people can afford to have some quality time in the garage with their motorcycle mistresses. But in the greater scheme of things for the Merman, our mistresses are hidden away in our garages and no one can see them. To that end, starting from today, Motone Customs is running a motorcycle photograph competition. An opportunity for you to publicly show off your steed, for the world to have a look at your motorcycles and see what you're doing with them, and in return, Moton Customs have pledged to judge the best photograph each month and give the winner a goodie bag containing some Moton merchandise. Now, I'm not entirely sure what Moton are going to be putting in that goodie bag as it stands, but it will be a selection from their merchandising range. Sam's a pretty generous guy and I have faith that it will be well worth you just sending a few snaps of your bike into Moton's FB page for a chance of getting some free stuff. Now, each month for as long as Moton are running this, he will be selecting just one winner from all those photographs that have been sent through the previous month and posted onto Moton's Facebook page. Now, it doesn't matter what motorcycle you ride, whether it be a Royal Enfield, a Triumph, a Harley Davidson, or a BMW, as long as you have at least one Moton Customs accessory fitted, and it's clearly visible in the photograph. Now, we do appreciate that your photographic opportunities under the current situation are going to be a bit limited and what we don't want is for people to go riding 50 or 60 miles to the nearest beauty spot to get one of those knockout photographs so although artistic composition will be taken into account we ask that you only send in photographs of your bike 
photographed on your drive, in your garage, in your garden, or if you like, even in your living room or kitchen. Now, you can, if you like, just send in one photograph, but you can post a maximum of three photographs, but they must all be included in the same post. Please don't post multiple posts. Sam at Merton will be the judge and what he's going to do is judge what he considers to be the best bike. It doesn't matter how many Merton parts that you have fitted as long as you've got at least one and it must be prominently visible in the photograph or at least one of the photographs that you upload. Now it did cross my mind that I might do a little video on a tutorial on how to get the best photograph out of your smartphone. If that's something people are interested in, let me know and maybe that's something I can do in the next week or so. All you have to do is go along to Moton's Facebook page and inside the post box, enter the words please in capitals Uncle Stew Photo Comp. And this is just so that Sam can differentiate the photo competition entries from any other posts. Now, by all means, if you wish to, write a little bit about your bike. Tell us anything about it that you would like us to know. And then go to the little button in the bottom left-hand corner of that box and upload your photographs. Now, as I've said, you can upload up to three photographs but at least one of them must be a full-length photograph of your bike. Now, it doesn't actually physically show your photographs on the post until you actually post it. It doesn't actually upload them until you actually press post. So just go ahead and select the photos that you want to include, put the text in that you want to include, and then press post. Now, don't worry if you get this wrong. If you just go to the little icon top right, the three dots, from there you can just delete your post and start again. Now when you're ready to upload your photographs, just go to those three dots on the right hand side at the bottom of your post, press post and the computer should do the rest. You can also do this from your phone if you wish. Now, I'm not sure whether Merton actually have to vet these just to make sure that no one's put any naughty pictures up so it might not appear in the public pictures immediately but you can preview it and check that it's okay by simply clicking on posts and then in the box on the right hand side it will show visitor posts so you can just click on that and it'll bring it up so that you can check it's all how you want it to be if it isn't just delete it and start again now there is absolutely no rush on this competition entries for this month must be submitted by midnight on the 30th of april sam will then have to get his finger out and make the judgment and i'll announce the winner at the first available opportunity after that at the end of the day you don't stand a chance of winning if you don't get a photograph up on there and for me personally, it would be great to see some of your bikes up on Moton's Facebook page. I can't wait to see them. Now, don't forget, there's still a 15% off all Moton accessories until the end of these troubles that we're going through, or at least for as long as Moton can stand to do it. And I will leave the password or passcode for you to obtain that discount in the video description down below. I'll also leave a link to Moton's Facebook page for your convenience. At the end of the day, this is something that you can easily do from home and it's not going to cost you a penny. So get out there and get snapping. Now that's it for this week. I will of course be back next week. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and helping to support this channel. I do sincerely hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be updated every time I upload a new video. Everybody, stay safe. If you have to ride, ride carefully. And I'll see you next week.